So our two uh, checks have passed, uh, meaning that our instance is now ready to uh, attempt to access via either the public IP or the public DNS record. We can use either or. I like using the public DNS record. And so I'm just gonna copy it using the little clipboard feature there, make a new tab in my browser and uh, paste it in there. And I'm gonna get the Apache test page, meaning that um, our user data script worked and it successfully installed and started Apache here. Um, so that's all great. Now, um, so now, you know, our instance is in good working order, but let's say we had to log into our instance to debug it or do something with it. That's where we're going to have to know how to either SSH in, um, which is usually the method that most people like to do, or we can use Simple Systems uh, Sessions Manager, which is the recommended way by AWS, okay? And so I'm going to show you both method methods here, starting uh, with um, Sessions Manager. But just before we do that, I just want to name our instance something here to make our lives a little bit easier here. You just have to click the little um, a pencil there and rename it. So I'm just renaming it to my server. And we'll pop down uh, services here and type SSM for Simple Systems Manager and make a new tab here click off here so we have um, our space here and we will go to the systems manager console now on the left hand side we are looking for sessions manager which is all the way down here and we're just going to click that and uh, we are going to start a new session so we're going to choose the instance we want to uh, connect to so just hit start instance here okay and uh, here we have my server um, which is the instance we want to connect to and we'll hit start session and it will uh, gain us access to this instance immediately So there's next to no wait and we are in this instance The only thing I don't like is that it logs you in as the root user which to me is very over permissive But uh, we can get to the correct user here uh, for e for Amazon Linux two instances It always has an EC2 user. That is the user that you want to be doing things under so I'm just going to um, Switch over to that user here just quickly here Okay, and so now I'm the correct user and I can go about doing whatever it is that I want to do here. Okay, right, so so there you go. So that's um, the uh, sessions manager. I'm just gonna hit terminate here to terminate that instance. And uh, again, the huge benefit here is that you get sessions history. So you can get a history of who has logged in and done uh, like uh, gone into the server to do something. Um, and, uh, you know, the other thing is that you don't have to share around that key pair because when you launch the EC2 instance, you only have that one key pair and you really don't want to share that around. Um, so this does, uh, remove that obstacle uh, for you. Also, because, uh, people have to log in the console there or people leave your company, uh, you know, you're also, um, denying them access there and you don't have to retract that key pair from them. Um, so it is a lot easier to use, um, uh, sessions manager the downside though is that it just has a very um, simplistic terminal within the browser so if you're used to more rich features from your um, uh, your OS terminal um, that is a, a big downside and that's why people still SSH in which is now the next method we are going to use to gain access to our EC2 instance so um, in order to do that we are going to need terminal okay and I just moved that uh, that key pair onto my desktop when you download it probably went to your download so just for convenience, I've moved it here. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to use our SSH command here and we're gonna log in as the EC2 user because that's the user you should be logging in as. And it's the user you have to log in as when you SSH into. And we're just gonna grab the public IP. Now we could use the public DNS record, but the IP address is a bit shorter here, so it's a bit nicer. And then we're gonna use a hyphen I flag to specify um, the private key that we want to pass along. It's on our desktop here. Um, I'm actually already on the desktop, so I don't have to do anything additional here. And we're just going to pass along. So we're gonna hit enter, okay. And we're just gonna wait here. And we got a permission denied. Now, if this is the first time you've logged the server, it might ask you to for a fingerprint where you will type yes. Okay, um, it didn't ask me that, so that's totally fine. Um, but you're gonna see that it, it's giving me a, a 644 error because the 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 private key is too open So it, it is required that your private key files are not accessible by others So AWS wants to really make sure that you lock down those permissions um, And so if we just take an LS hyphen LA here We can see that it has uh, quite a few permissions here and we could just lock that down by typing chmod 400 Okay and then if we just take a look here again, now it's locked down here. So if we try to SSH in again, okay, we should have better luck this time around. It's not as fast as Sessions Manager, but it will get you in the door there. There we are. And we are logged in as the EC2 user, okay? And we go about our business doing whatever it is that we'd want to do. 
Now, um, we did talk about in the, um, the the actual journey about user data and metadata, and this is the best opportunity to uh, take a look there. So um, we have this um, private uh, this private address that's only accessible when you're inside your EC2 instance, so you can gain additional information. First one is the user data one. Okay, so if I just was to um, paste that in there, and it's just curl HTTP 169.254, 169.254, latest user data. And if I were to hit enter, it will return the script that actually uh, was uh, performed on launch. Okay, so if you were to debug an EC2 instance and it wasn't, you know, you're like working for another company and you didn't launch that instance and you really wanted to know what was uh, what was performed on launch, you could use that to find out. Then we have uh, the metadata endpoint, and that is a way for us to get a lot of different rich information. So it's the same thing. It's just going to have metadata on the end there with uh, with a forward slash. And you have all these different options, okay? So let's say we wanted to get the uh, IP address here of this instance. We could just uh, append IP public IPv4 on there, okay? And there you go. So um, you know that is how you log into SS, uh, into an instance via SSH or or ses sessions manager, and that's how we get some user data and metadata after the fact.